Hello and welcome to another episode of HVAC System Design Tutorial with the channel of the World of Building Design. And my name is Babak, I'm your host. In this tutorial and in the continuation of the variable refrigeration flow uh, system design, we're continuing on the topic of VRF system and uh, we are looking into different consideration when, when you start designing a system, a VRF system uh, as a HVAC designer. What are the other considerations that you have to take into account? In this tutorial, we're not going to get into a detailed calculation or design parameters. We rather look into the consideration that you have to have in mind when you start designing a VRF system. One of the topics that we talked about in the previous tutorial was the compressor. So if you know, uh, there might be different compressor technology. Uh, that you can use in the VRF system when you uh, look at the um, cut sheet and when you select the VRF system uh, with the manufacturers, you want to look into the efficiency of the compressors and efficiency of the part load they can handle. And um, you have to look into the possibility of having backup for your compressor and in general for your uh, VRF system because when your compressor fails, uh, that means that your total system fails. So you want to have a better backup for your compressor system. And also, obviously, you want to look into some control logic to have a better uh, efficient operation and operational control uh, of the optimal uh, energy efficiency of the compressor. You know that compressors normally uh, consume um, the maximum um, energy and uh, wattage um, from your system as a whole and it's very important to to run them in the most efficient way. Other aspect of the uh, compressor system is to understand what what are the oil management system you take into account, what type of oil management you have. Uh, you want to increase the reliability of the uh, VRF system and specifically the compressors of the VRF system. Uh, when, we, when we talk about the Oil management, we mean that the compressor uh, are lubricated. Uh, the shaft of a compressor uh, requires uh, continuous lubrication and uh, requires oil. This is not a you know, magnetic bearing uh, technology type of compressor. We're talking about uh, the oil dependent type of compressor. So oil management and increasing the reliability and stable operation is a key into a continuous operation of a VRF system. Other consideration is the piping and the flow that we consider. What is the maximum total length of the pipe and the height and the distance between the evaporator and the condenser unit in the VRF system. These are all the consideration that you have to have when you start designing uh, a VRF for a building. Uh, so these are the topics that we might look into a little bit in this tutorial. So as we said, the type of compressors, uh, the most uh, common type of compressors in the VRF application are a scroll and rotary type compressor, as you can see from the photos. And in the left hand side, you see that there's a scroll, um, you know, a scroll type of compressor. And these are very common type of uh, compressor uh, compressor systems in the VRF application. The other things that we touched on very high level in the previous tutorial was uh, utilization of the inverter driven compressor. When we say inverter driven, we mean that uh, the uh, the compressor motor uh, modulates. So the compressor motor is not a constant uh, type of rotation. It modulates, it increases and decreases the, the rotation or RPM of the um, you know the shaft of the compressor and this is all based on the demand. The more uh, compressed refrigerant is required, the, the harder and faster the, the compressor shaft works and is basically working at the higher frequency. Um, the motor works at the higher frequency. So variable compressor motor is basically the same as the inverter driven compressor type of technology, which is very common in the in the VRF, which is um, a benefit from energy standpoint. And this is very common to be used. Um, it, if you look at this diagram, 
this is clearly shows that uh, the, the life of a compressor workload is different. When you start utilizing a, a VRF system in the morning, maybe you don't have that much of a cooling load. And as you get in through the day, when you get to the noon time, you have a lot more cooling demand and, and then the cooling demand would decrease as you have a less cooling demand toward the evening. And what is showing in this schematic is basically if you have a redundant compressor, as you can see the number one and number two, there are two compressor here. So you can work with a control logic where you can optimize the operation of this compressor, meaning that you can start with one compressor at the earliest stage on the left hand side, and then you start uh, you know, loading that compressor up until 80% of the compressor um, you know, capacity. And then when the load goes even beyond the 80% capacity, you can activate the second compressor. As you can see in this third uh, option, you can activate the second compressor and basically you run the two compressor on a 50-50% capacity and based on the cooling demand. You increase the capacity balance when there's a maximum cooling demand and then you start decreasing and then gradually you shift the whole load to the second compressor as you can see here and then fully to the second compressor. So this basically gives you a multiple advantage advantages. One is that the most efficient usage of the compressor will occur this way. Um, you, you use, you run the compressors in a very efficient manner. You, you provide a rotation between the two compressors so the life cycle of a compressor is not going to be you know decreased uh, as opposed to another compressor so you create some form of a balance uh, you know workload between the compressors and also you you load them on a proper proportional way based on a uh, you know efficient and effective control logic so that's that's the you know the topic that I wanted to touch on a little bit on what is the advantage of having a good control logic redundancy in a VRF system compressor and also the rotation of the utilization between the multiple compressor. Another topic that we said we're going to talk about is a very high level looking into the noise level of the VRF system because you know VRF because of its compressor it has a like a louder noise and when you put it in a perspective with a you know different noise level if you look at this graph there are different noise level from uh, you know different threshold. The minimal threshold of the noise level is hearing threshold, as you can see on the left hand side. And then this threshold goes all up until you get to 120 decibel, which is the the, the sound level of a jet engine. Uh, so that's a very very high hearing threshold. And different systems fall within different range of a sound pressure level and different decibel level. As you can see, you have evaporator head, as you can see, that is at 20, at 34 uh, decibel. Um, and then you get into other type of, um, you know, VRF head at different decibel range. And ultimately, when you look at your condenser system, which is installed outdoor, uh, these units have the maximum, um, you know, noise level at the range of 68 or 56 decibel as you can see and when you follow the the arrow here you see that they fall in the range where the sound level is even less than conversation between two person the sound emitted uh, from the condenser are in that kind of range so that's basically um, the the sound range with the new um, VRF technology and if for any consideration you need to make your space even more quieter like whether it's an outdoor unit, you want to have a surrounding, uh, quieter surrounding, uh, or if you install the indoor unit and you want even lower than this decibel range, you need to take into account other considerations such as other acoustical uh, plenums or installing the, the acoustic ceiling panels with a certain sound attenuation level, uh, which is uh, very helpful to attenuate even more 
uh, noise from your uh, equipment installed in space. So this is another very major consideration. When you select the system, you look into all these uh, parameters in the cut sheet or in the you know catalog of different uh, VRF equipment. The other topic of consideration is the piping and the height. Obviously, the uh, you know, VRF system, there are some limitations in terms of what's the total length of the piping can be, what's the total height between the fan coil units from the minimal level all the way to the top level, and also the total uh, uh, furthest equivalent length of the piping that you can install. As you can see, these are all very nicely uh, translated in this slide. You can see that, um, for example, the furthest equivalent length showing with this blue line is from the you know, evaporator head on the first level, and then it gets all the way to, to your condenser on the top. In this case, it's 738 feet. So these are the very important considerations you need to consult with the type of manufacturer you would like to select your VRF system from. Definitely, they need to have um, an opinion on this, whether or not your building is suitable or eligible to use their line of product uh, as it relates to the VRF system. So you have to uh, provide all this detailed information to the manufacturer rep. So this is another major consideration in terms of your total piping and flow. Another thing about the heat recovery, um, you know, VRF we discussed about is that the total height between the indoor and outdoor unit is not recommended to go beyond 100 feet. And if you translate each level to be, you know, in the range of 10 feet, slab to slab, you, you can't install the VRF system for a building more than 11 story, as you can see here. Unless you have an outdoor unit installed uh, somewhere on the balcony or somewhere in the middle of the, you know, in the middle of the floor, so you can gain more height. So in total, the static, uh, you know, the static head cannot be beyond 100 feet, as you can see here, between the indoor and outdoor unit. So the, in this case, the outdoor unit or condenser unit is installed on the floor, and the indoor unit is on the 11th floor. So this is another major consideration and a limitation of the VRF when it comes to be installed on the high-rise building. As we said, there are other consideration, design consideration, such as application, which building, what type of building you are designing the VRF system for. Um, we are looking at the ventilation requirement. You have to know what kind of ventilation, what's the level of ventilation, and the type of uh, outdoor air supply you need to uh, provide to the space. Is it introduced directly to the to the VRF fan coil, or is it going to be standalone uh, outdoor air? introduced to the space or not. So there are different ventilation techniques and ventilation um, setup that you need to take into account uh, when you design for your VRF system. You look into building diversity. What is the diversity of the building? What is the maximum capacity and what's the um, you know higher percentage of the building to be occupied at different time of the, the day? during the noon time, afternoon, or overnight, what's the occupancy, non-occupancy. These are all the consideration when you do a maximum load design, you have to look into the building diversity. Equipment layout and zoning. How you zone the building. Are you combining multiple rooms, multiple space into one zone, or how you, you envision the layout of a building served by the uh, VRF? Refrigeration management, how you manage the refrigerant, what's the volume of the refrigerant you're distributing across the building in the circuit. Regulation applies to the building with the VRF. These are the things that you need to take into account. Is the VRF heating sufficient for the building? Do you need supplement heating for the building? What's the ultimate energy efficiency that you need to consider? And ultimately, what's the best software or what kind of softwares you can use to design a VRF system. So this is a kind of broad uh, topic to design the VRF system. I'm hopeful that we can uh, continue on this very same topic for the next number of uh, tutorials. Ultimately, we can do one example of a VRF system, uh, you know, separate different zones and um, do the calculation and come up with a VRF system for that. So in the next tutorial, we're gonna look into other consideration 
We look at the application between two pipe and three pipe system. Look at the zone selection for VRF system design and other considerations that we just mentioned above, such as outdoor ventilation, uh, humidification, energy efficiency, and refrigeration management. Um, and we're going to discuss this all in the next tutorial. If you're interested in the HVAC system design tutorial and you haven't subscribed in this channel of the World of Building Design, please go ahead and subscribe. Press on the bell button uh, next to the subscription uh, to see the new tutorial as soon as they are posted. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next tutorial.